Hi, welcome to Kirstie's virtual classroom. Today we're going to dive into the introduction of California geology, which is what this class is all about, right? So let's get into it. So in California, we have a very vast geology. We have a vast landscape. Um, as many of you, if you've traveled anywhere in the state, probably know, we can go from the beach on the same day and travel all the way to the desert or all the way to the high Sierras. So we have a very vast landscape. You can be on the beach in the morning and then you can travel all the way to the Mojave Desert and enjoy some desert landscape. And then the next day you can drive up to the mountains or even in the same day if you're really that adventurous. Um, it'll take you quite a few hours, but we have a very vast landscape. So it's really awesome to be in California and study geology. In the early years, um, a lot of people thought that California was kind of separate from everything else. So this is an early 1650s map of California, kind of detached from the rest of North America, which is obviously not the case, right? Um, we can drive straight from California into a lot of other states, so we're not detached by an inland sea or anything like that. Um, and we won't be in the future either. So we'll talk about that a little bit with um, plate tectonics and faults and earthquakes in this class. Um, but just keep in mind that we won't necessarily fall off into the sea like some people like to think we will. And the geology is really complex. So I know it sounds like we're really boring here in Fresno because we don't have these big mountains um, and volcanoes or earthquakes or anything like that. But this is the Fresno sheet of the California geology. So all of these different colors are actually showing you the different rocks in the area. So this is actually the Sierra Nevada. This is the San Joaquin Valley down here. So this is the Fresno sheet that shows from kind of the central portion of the San Joaquin Valley over to Owens Valley on the eastern side of the Sierras, Sierra Nevadas. Um, so this is all of Fresno County. And the pink is granite, of course. Most of the Sierras are granite. Um, and the yellows are usually a quaternary alluvium or sediment, basically. So the valley in Fresno and the San Joaquin Valley is filled mostly with sedimentary components. So this would be sand, silt, clay. Um, most of what we see is a mixture of sand and silt. Okay, so the geology in not just the Fresno area, but all of California is actually very complex. Um, and the history of the processes that have produced the geology that we see today are really um, quite dense. Um, there's a lot of dynamic processes that we see almost almost all of the different uh, geologic occurrences here in California, which is really cool. Um, but because our state is so complex, um, it has been divided into 11 different geomorphic provinces. And so these provinces are separations of the state um, that are dictated by uh, the obviously the area, the types of rocks that we see there, their geologic history, and their geomorphology. So geomorphic geomorphology is the study of the landscape. So depending on how the landscape looks, it's separated into a separate province. So here are the, sep uh, the 11, not seven, <laughs> provinces of California. So we live in the Great Valley here. And most of you are probably familiar with the Sierra Nevada and the Coast Ranges. Those are th three of the biggest um, provinces in California. Let me move right here for you. And then we have some of these others. We have some deserts. We have the Mojave Desert, the Colorado Desert. And then we have some areas with a lot of volcanic um, pieces left over. We have the Cascade Range, which hosts uh, Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen. We have Modoc Plateau, which is basically a vast landscape of basaltic lava. And then um, we have the basin and range in a couple of different spots. So we have north um, eastern California um, near Tahoe, just north of Tahoe, and then um, just on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada. So we have the Klamath Mountains as well, which is in the northwestern corner of California. This is a very complicated geology, as you can see. The more colors you see, 
the com more complicated the geology will be. Because um, that means that there's a lot of different rock types up there. And we'll talk about each of these um, through the coming weeks. And basically each one will have its own module. Okay, so we talked about the Klamath Mountains Cascades, which ranges all the way up into Washington, Modoc Plateau, Coastal Ranges, Great Valley, the Sierra Nevada Basin Range, Mojave, and then we have the Transverse Ranges, which is part of the Grapevine and the Santa Barbara area. And then we also have the Peninsular Ranges, which is down in the LA Basin to the San Diego area, and then the Colorado Desert. All right, so let's get into these. So the Klamath Mountains are known for their gold-bearing gravels. Um, the Cascades, like I said, are volcanic cones or volcanoes that um, extend north into Washington um, and some into Canada. Uh, the Modoc Plateau is a volcanic tableland built of lava beds and tuff beds. Um, we'll learn a little bit more about what tufts are, but they're basically um, rocks filled with just volcanic ash. And then the coast ranges are subparallel, so they are parallel to the San Andreas, which is uplifted marine sediments. I'll explain why that is in a little bit. Um, the Great Valley that we live in is an alluvial plain, um, just basically filled in sediments from the coast ranges in the Sierra Nevada. It's 50 miles wide and 400 miles long. And then the Sierra Nevada, let me move my guy again. Uh, the Sierra Nevada has the highest point, which is Mount Whitney, and it's a tilted fault block that is 400 miles in length. All right, then we move into the basin and range so that's over here in the eastern and then northeastern part of the state. Um, this we area has a lot of faulting and stretching that has created lakes, playas, and death valleys. So um, this, I'll talk about in a little bit, create something called a horse and a graben scenario. So we have a series of normal faults that alternate in their orientation and that creates blocks that uplift and blocks that drop down. And so we kind of get this up and down scenario where we have a mountain range and then a valley, a mountain range and then a valley, okay? Uh, the trans, uh, sorry, the Mojave Desert is right over in here in the southeastern portion of the state. Um, it's isolated by a bunch of mountains and it's bounded by the San Andreas and the Garlock Faults. So the San Andreas Fault runs down through here in California, basically right through all of these ranges. And then the Garlock Fault runs east-west. So the San Andreas runs north-west-southeast and the Garlock Fault runs east-west. The transverse ranges, meaning basically cut across, are part of the Santa Monica Mountains. And this is where you see the grapevine and all that complex geology in there. The peninsular ranges are similar to the coast ranges, um, uh, but they are more geologically close to the Sierra Nevada. So their geology resembles more of Sierra Nevada rocks. And then the Colorado Desert down here in Southern California is low-lying deserts that are dominated by the Salton Sea, which is this blue area right here over the first part of the word. Um, and it is a depression block between the San Andreas and the Mojave. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about faulting and deformation. So I talked about a Horst and Graben scenario, um, which is what happens in the basin and range where um, two sets of normal faults are basically angled away from each other, and that will create a down drop block and an uplifted block. The uplifted block is the horst or the mountain range, and the down drop block is the graben or the valley. Um, so most of the deformation in California is a result of subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate and the Farallon plate that created the volcanics and the batholiths. So the batholiths being Sierra Nevada and the volcanics that you see include the Cascades and Long Valley Caldera. Um, we did see accretion or pushing of two plates to create mountains like the coast ranges. Um, and accretion is when a subducting plate, we'll go over this in a second again, uh, when a subducting plate is going beneath another plate, it's subducting basically, material is scraped off the top of it 
and accreted into this wedge. And so we call that accretion and that pushing and accretion or buildup of material leads to lower mountain ranges like the coast ranges. And um, we also have seen faulting. So we have uplift of plates, creates mountains. Now we see uh, mainly a transform plate boundary and the faulting can cause other regions to drop creating basins like Death Valley here. All right, so here's a quick tectonics uh, review. I just kind of went over it a little bit, but remember we have three plate boundaries. We have convergent, divergent, and transform. Convergent is two plates colliding. So a tectonic plate is a piece of Earth's crust that is colliding with another piece of Earth's crust, and it slides along this asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is more kind of like a semi-solid, and it allows the tectonic plates to move either together, apart, or sliding past each other. And so if they are converging, we call that convergent plate boundaries, or if they are coming together. If they are pulling apart, we call that divergent. And if they're sliding past each other, we call that transform. So convergent plate boundaries can also lead to something called subduction, especially when we have an oceanic plate and a continental plate colliding. So if those two, like seen in this um, diagram in the upper right, the oceanic plate is this one here, and it is subducting beneath the continental plate because it is much more dense. The reason it's more dense is because it is made up of a rock. Most, most of it is made up of a rock called basalt, and most of the continental crust is made up of granite. Granite is less dense than basalt, thus basalt will sink more likely than granite will. And so that sinking allows for water that was on top of the subducting plate to go down into the mantle and it lowers the melting temperature of the mantle and it allows plumes of magma to rise, which creates volcanoes, plutons, things like that. And then we see accretion where the two plates are colliding. There is basically scraping off the top and then that creates our coast ranges that I talked about. Um, and this is also going to create earthquakes because obviously when two pieces of rock are colliding, tectonic plates are colliding, they're going to create um, ground shaking, which is an earthquake. All right, so this is a really cool diagram of what North America kind of used to be along its coast. So here we see the North American plate and the Pacific plate, which we know today are the two interacting plates for California. Um, but prior to about 40 million years ago, we had another plate between them called the Farallon plate. And this plate, as you'll watch, hopefully it'll play. The Farallon plate subducted beneath North America, and eventually so much of it subducted, it turned into an offshoot as the Juan de Fuca plate, and then eventually that entire plate subducts beneath North America. And we only see a small remnant of the Juan de Fuca plate. And you'll start to see California take its shape. So where did Baja California come from? So let's watch that one more time. So we see the Farallon plate subducting beneath North America, and we have this remnant called the Juan de Fuca plate left. And most of California has not taken shape until right about now. And the Pacific plate, whoop, the Pacific plate starts to drag portions of southwestern North America upwards and creates Baja California. And this block that rotated right here is the Santa Barbara block. And if you watch where it comes from, it comes from the area where most of the batholith or the granitic rocks forming the Sierra Nevadas came from. So you'll start to watch this piece here rotate and kind of get shoved up here where we see most of the accretionary rocks from the subduction. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the geomorphology. So if you don't know what geomorphology is, it is the study of landforms, their processes, 
um, forming and sediments at the surface. So anything that basically shows you the landscape is the geomorphology of an area. Um, so most of the surface processes that occur in California's landscape today are erosion, transportation, and deposition. So a lot of what you see shaping it is a sedimentary process. And we use something called uniformitarianism. And if you're not familiar with that term, it means that the present is the key to the past. So geology's present landscape will give geologists insight into the past environments, which includes um, having inland seas and oceans, the volcanic activity, earthquakes, and many more. So let's look at some of the geologic history of California. So most of the rocks found on most areas are 600 million years old. Um, or less than 600 million years old. Um, but in a couple of areas in California, specifically Death Valley and the Transverse Ranges, we see rocks that are over a billion years old, which is pretty old. Um, we don't normally see that in many areas because a lot of it has been weathered away or changed into a different rock. Um, but we're lucky enough that there are some ancient metamorphic rocks that are nice and schist, and we'll talk a little bit um, later about what those rocks are specifically, but they're metamorphic rocks like this one in this picture that range from about 1.4 to 1.7 billion years old. And remember, the Earth is only 4.6 billion years old, which is a long time, but considering we have rocks that are very close to the origin of Earth in age is really cool. Um, so from about a billion years ago to 400 million years ago, most of California was under the ocean. And this is when um, the Sierra Nevada started to uplift. And then we actually see some landscape of California. The vast geology of California suggests that there was once a subduction zone in the region, which is what I just talked about with the Farallon plate being situated between the North American um, and Pacific plates. And now we see the transform plate boundary, which is that boundary that brought Baja California up into, um, or further north anyway. Okay, another place we see really, really old rocks is in the Arcopia Mountains. Um, we have something called the Arcopia Schist. So here we are in LA in this map, um, and the Arcopia Mountains are right here just to the west um, in the Mojave Desert area. Um, so these rocks um, are found near the Salton Sea. And they were likely rocks that used to be on top of that Farallon plate that's subducted. Um, and then they were metamorphosed into a schist. So they were previously probably a gray wacky, a mudstone, or another volcanic rock that formed into this schist. And after subduction, the directed pressure pushes the rock together and it allows for this kind of banded schist to be created and then pushed upland or inland, excuse me. All right, so let's talk a little bit about geologic, the tectonics of California. So this is a very dense slide. So we're gonna kind of go through it step by step, um, but this gives you kind of a graphic visualization of what the tectonic history of California kind of looks like. So late Cenozoic, basically 20 million years ago to today, and then when we started to actually form into a, a full state. So the early Paleozoic, 570 to 350 million years ago. In this stage, we see sediments that eroded from older rocks are exposed in the middle of the ancient North American continent, progressively accumulated on an expanding continental shelf and the stable passive ocean margin basin. So this is when most things are basically relatively flat right now, and we just see sediments. Okay, and then we move into the mid Paleozoic, and this is when we start to see something called the antler orogeny. And the orogeny is a mountain building event, and it has affected not just California, but also the Nevada, what is now Nevada. Um, so we see shallow seas that are still covered up most of Western North America. Um, and what is California is mostly under this ocean margin basin here. Then we move into time C or late Paleozoic here. Um, we see North America continent is slowly merging with the supercontinent Pangaea. Um, and then we see the Rocky Mountains rise over here on the right hand side or inland side of this diagram here. 
and the uh, small amount land masses are accreted in the western margin. So this is when we start to see the accretion of the coast ranges. So the Farallon plate is subducting and we have the accretion starting to begin. Then we move into early Paleo, or sorry, early Mesozoic, um, and this is when we start to see something called an island arc called Sonoma. Um, so island arcs form um, in the middle of an ocean generally. Um, so we call this an island arc until the ocean has kind of proceeded away, um, and it collides with North American continent. The subduction changes from dipping eastward to dipping westward. Right, and then we move into late Mesozoic. We have ongoing subduction that results in the buildup of these great baffles. So um, we start to see the creation of our batholitic granitic rocks from the Sierra Nevada. And um, the sediments from these mountain ranges flood the interior of the continent um, by the Western Interior Seaway. All right, then we move into the early Cenozoic. In the late Cretaceous, the North American plate begins to rapidly override the Farallon plate. So we start to see the disappearing of the Farallon plate. This is from 65 to 20 million years ago, roughly. Um, we lose the Farallon plate roughly 40 million years ago. Um, in the early Cenozoic time, subduction extends far into the east, resulting in massive volcanism throughout the Rocky Mountain region. So um, the Farallon plate subduction is moving fairly far east. That was bringing that water down in and creating volcanism in the Rocky Mountains over here. So if you ever wonder why there is a vast mountain range in the middle of North America, this is why. All right, and then we move into late Cenozoic. Um, this is when the North America overrides the spreading center. Uh, between the Pacific Plate and the Farallon Plate, the spreading center migrates eastward, causing massive crustal extension beneath what is now the Great Basin region. So the Great Basin is this crustal extension here, the normal faults that is created from the Pacific Plate and the Farallon Plate that we're pulling apart. So as the Farallon Plate was subducting beneath North America, it was also pulling away from the Pacific Plate. The Pacific Plate moves northwest in relation to the North American Plate. Um, and do, by doing so, it was actually pulling away from the Farallon plate. And so we see as that is subducted underneath the continent, um, we see that spreading center preserved in the crustal extension of the basin and range. Um, and the North America overrides the hot spots in the upper mantle, resulting in extensive volcanism in Yellowstone, Columbia River, and North American regions. So we see um, volcanism continue inland from that interaction. Um, and then changes in plate boundary configurations result in the formation of the San Andreas and other regional fault systems. So the San Andreas fault system is then generated between the Pacific plate and the North American plate as they slide past each other. Okay, so in kind of smaller summary there for you, um, about 400 million years ago, subduction occurred along the western U.S. birth that birthed the volcanic. So here are all the volcanic centers in um, California. And then around 270 million years ago, we started colliding with Pangaea. 245 to 65 million years ago, we see the formation of the granitic rocks that make up the Sierra Nevada. We see the extent of those being found all the way up into Alaska. Um, 100 million years ago, we see the full subduction of the Farallon Plate, creating the new San Andreas Fault between North America and Pacific Plates. And then 20 million years ago, uh, we see volcanics in the Mojave, resulting extension and thinning of the crust. And then fast forward to the most recent 100,000 years, what is happening? Glaciers. <laughs> so uh, within the last 100,000 years, one of the biggest um, changes to our landscape is from glaciers and volcanics. Um, glaciers have been dominating California um, from about 760,000 years ago um, until about 10,000 years ago. Uh, so these are some of the Sierra glaciations and their associated ages. All right, and then today, most of what is building California are earthquakes, weathering and erosion, landslides, and our coastal erosion. So these are the major factors, geologically speaking, that are shaping California's landscape or shaping the geomorphology of California. And we'll get a little bit more into tectonics 
um, do some review of rocks and um, earth materials before we start moving into these different provinces. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys learned something from this lecture and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.